Hi, Jesse Roberts, uh, Senior Vice President of Cybersecurity over at Compass IT Compliance. Um, a lot of posts out there about multi-factor authentication and uh, making sure you have it turned on. So I thought I'd do a quick video on uh, multi-factor authentication using the built-in Microsoft 365 platform. Uh, for starters, you have to make sure that you do have the correct license. Uh, th there is certain features of multi-factor that are available on the Azure AD free tier, as you can see here, uh, but you have to have uh, the security defaults enabled for all users by default, which a lot of organizations don't. I highly recommend that you do enable this feature as it's going to protect your Azure Active Directory AD uh, with a good set of standard security practices. On top of that, uh, you might need a different type of license if you don't have that enabled but uh, any one of these licenses will work if you are not sure if you have the licensing that's required uh, contact your reseller of Microsoft 365 or a Microsoft rep to make sure that you have the proper license uh, so let's get going we're first off I'm gonna go ahead and log into my Microsoft 365 tenant And it's interesting, right, when you try to find Microsoft 365 login, Microsoft 365 uh, access. It's pretty uh, It's pretty interesting how we just haven't really had a, a, a button anywhere. Um, so, But you can easily find it. But even if you're doing a Google search, you want to be careful and make sure that you're actually hitting the correct portal. So if I went to office.com, that should cover me. Let's go ahead and give it a sign-in. I'm going to put in my user account and I have something called passwordless authentication with a two-factor push uh, we're going to cover that later in the video here but basically what I'm doing now is I'm seeing a prompt on my phone that says hey there's a location uh, that's trying to log into your app and go ahead and input this number into your app, uh, Microsoft Authenticator app to proceed Okay, so I'm in, so I'm going to want to go over to my admin area, which should be available to global administrators or other roles that have that access, uh, but by default, global administrator is the one I am using. I'm going to go into users, active users. I'm going to create a new user. I'm sorry, actually, I am not going to create a new user. I have a user already kind of spun up for this, and it is a user called passwordless that's unlicensed so I'm gonna go ahead and license this user by clicking here going to licenses and apps and assigning a Microsoft 365 e5 license which will enable us to do uh, the multi-factor authentication without having Azure Active Directory check mark there or anything like that so I'm gonna go ahead and click Save Changes And now your changes will be saved. Um, we are good to go as far as having this user uh, ready to log into Microsoft 365 services. I'm going to do a quick password reset. Have it emailed to myself. There's the password right there. Now a lot of you are probably like, oh, I'm going to try to log into that. Uh, the account's most likely going to be removed by the time I have this video and if it's not I'll still have it protected by two-factor auth. Now that I have my user set up, um, previous step I'm going to go into Azure Active Directory Administrative Center. Uh, to get there it should be within your admin portal. Azure Active Directory. Once I'm in the main admin panel, I'm going to click on Azure Active Directory, scroll on down to security, and then I'm going to choose authentication methods. I'm going to want to make sure I highlight Microsoft Authenticator, so this is going to give us access to use the Microsoft Authenticator app, which is available on iOS and Android phones. Your users are going to have to uh, download and install it. 
in order to properly use uh, MFA on the Microsoft platform. So clicking into Microsoft Authenticator, we're going to go ahead and click Enable. Make sure that we're going to make all our users. Uh, all users registration will be optional. And for authentication mode, we have a couple different. We have any passwordless or push. I'm going to go with passwordless. Um, we're going to, because this is the, where Microsoft is taking this. It's going to basically um, have you authenticate using your phone, like the example I gave earlier, where you'll get a notification of login and be presented with a number that you'll then have to input in your app. Uh, doing this this way means that you no longer have to rely on changing passwords. Uh, Microsoft's official guidance on passwords are having a strong password with two-factor authentication enabled, and you don't have to change it more than once a year, if at all. So, I do have basics enabled. Target is all users. If you wanted to roll it out only for one subset of users, you would obviously do select users and do it there. I highly recommend you have it on for all users in your organization or available to all users in your organization. The next thing I'm going to do is go to configure. Require number matching for push notifications. Uh, what this setting does is it prevents uh, basically the scenario where somebody gets two-factor bombed, where they get so many notifications that they just click approve because they're getting too many on their app and they're getting annoyed and they're assuming that they're trying to log into the system anyway. Uh, having this setting prevents that type of thing from happening because the user has to input in a number that's presented to them on the screen to prove it's a session they are initiating. Show application name and push and passwordless notifications. Uh, you're going to go ahead and want to do that just to see what type of application is coming through. And then finally, show geographic location. This is super useful because, for example, earlier when I didn't approve, I'm from Providence, Rhode Island area, uh, said, hey, a user's trying to log in from the Providence, Rhode Island area. If I saw something earlier, or um, if I had seen something that was saying, hey, you're trying to log in from California, I know that's nef definitely not me. And I would then uh, investigate that login or notify the appropriate department to investigate and reset or um, try to uh, lock out my account to prevent further compromise. So all those settings are saved and we should be ready to uh, register that new user which we'll be doing next year. Okay now that I have the uh, relevant options enabled um, I have the end user set up uh, there is a couple more things I have to just make sure um, so let's go into now uh, the back to the um, Azure Active Directory dashboard um, into users and then click on the per user MFA. Um, I'm going to have to log back in with my particular account here and I'm getting my prompt on my phone and I'm going to go ahead and allow that number. Sorry, I took it a little bit to pop in there. And as you can see, we have um, all these different accounts on our organization, even some guest accounts, uh, which I should probably blur out, which I will do at the final release of this video. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and I'm going to find my user, uh, which is called Passwordless. I want to make sure that this user uh, has multi-factor authentication set to enforce. Um, when I go to manage these settings, require selected users to provide contact. That's if they were to forget a phone or lost access to the device to approve. But overall, you want to make sure it's set to enforced. It looks like this. I'll go ahead and disable it quickly and then just re-enable it. So I just enabled it. Um, and again, I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, enforce this policy as well, just to really hammer it home there. Okay, that part is now done and we are ready to move on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take the steps now to log in to that particular account. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to show everybody another crucial setting to have. 
and I'm going to do it with uh, the iPhone here. Um, I'm going to first locate the Microsoft Authenticator app, which is right there. And then I'm going to find my PLESS account. Um, so this is on already established MFA users. You're going to want to click in here. You want to click in Enable Phone Sign-In. And you're going to want to make sure that you um, click Continue and have it register all the way through. Uh, in order to do this, you, you will have to put in your password. But once you do that, um, you are good to go with passwordless auth on top of that. So that's kind of what that process looks like. So again, you have to just make sure that you set up your phone or your authenticator app to have that particular setting. And again, it is found where you do enable phone sign in right there. Okay. So then that will allow us to do passwordless sign in enabled, which means you will no longer need to provide your password. So moving on. So um, if we look here, I'm getting a prompt with number 25, which is exactly what we want. That prevents you from getting flying victim to basically the um, two-factor prompt bombing there. So if I look at what my phone is showing me, it's saying, hey, enter the number in here. Oh, and the requ is, um, request is coming from Rhode Island, which is accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the number 25, click yes, wait for my face ID to go. And it should just go ahead and log me right on in. Now, uh, you may be asking yourself, oh, what about that passwordless authentication? Well, um, that was enabled, but it does take it a, a few minutes to fully uh, integrate in the system. And we're going to see if we can get it to prompt for use the app instead so we don't have to type in a password. But we did get the push notification for um, the number. And we also got a location, which, again, is going to be much better than your typical, uh, you know, just allow the MFA prompt. It's going to really, really uh, help your organization stay more secure. All right, so I'm at the login prompt again here uh, to see if it's going to actually allow me to use the passwordless option. And there is that option right there where it says use app instead. And that's because I went into my phone configuration and I enabled uh, the passwordless option with the, the phone uh, sign in as shown earlier. So I'm going to click use app instead. You'll notice it is now not prompting me for the password, but I'm still getting the two factor prompt. And I'm going to show everybody that on my phone. And we're going to go ahead and type in the number. I'm verifying that it is me app office home Rhode Island United States click yes and it's going to let us right in without a password now which is super convenient and a nice feature to entice your users to want to use MFA instead of complaining about it uh, that kind of concludes this video I know it's a uh, you know roughly 14 minutes 15 minutes video but it took through the basic steps of getting Microsoft 365 two-factor authentication enabled and its use. Uh, remember to train your users properly on it. And again, it's recommended to have this enabled for all users in your organization. If you have any questions, feel free to open up a contact us form or drop a comment on the video. And uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks, everybody.